Hey, what's up guys, Ultra White Master Race here. And today I want to show you how to set up MSI Afterburner to give you the overlay that I have created. Of course, you can make your own overlay, make it look as uh, customized as, as much as you want and make it look like you want it to look like. And I'm going to get in a little bit into the details of how to do that as well. So first of all, you're going to download, if you haven't heard about it, MSI Afterburner. Just Google that and uh, get the latest version. This is how it's going to look. And on top of that, it's going to install Reva Tuna st Blub Statistics Server. Um, this is just mandatory. doesn't work without it. So it comes with this. And the first thing you're going to do is go into Reva Tuna Statistics Server and set the settings as they are here. Um, I think this is already on default. Um, you can mess around with these settings a little bit. This here, the slider is for basically the volume. So as you can see in the background that my overlay is getting ginormous. Let's actually put that back to normal. And you can also turn off the shadow if you want. I like it the way it is. Right, this is the fill option. So there's no background anymore. As you can see, it creates a background. Uh, you can also choose what kind of background you want or the color palette. Okay, so this is the first step you're going to do. Open this program, set this up like this. And after that, you're going to go into MSI Afterburner. Go set up a bunch of basics over there. For example, I set up my MSI Afterburner to start with Windows and start it minimized. Uh, I also go and tick unlock voltage control and monitoring. Um, this here is supposed to tell you whether you have a third party GPU or a reference design GPU or anything MSI. I'm not sure if these do anything, but I have a third party because I own a AORUS uh, 3080. Um, and these are the basic settings you're going to set up here, right? Uh, you can go into fan, customize your fan profile, but this is not really what this video is about. Uh, next thing you're going to do is go into on-screen uh, display, and then you can toggle a shortcut or a hotkey that you set up for yourself to basically display uh, or shut off the overlay which doesn't work right now. Sometimes it's kind of wonky, but you could turn it on or off. Here, now it works. So I'm pressing F10. And obviously, if you're going to play an immersive game, you're not going to want to see that all the time. So this is why you make a toggleable hotkey. Um, now, this is basically all I set up here. Now, to customize really the look of the statistics themselves and what you want to display. There's a lot to learn. Uh, under monitoring, this is where it becomes interesting. So basically, the first thing you, you need to do in order to even have the possibility of displaying something here is ticking this graph, this check mark in, in the beginning. So as you can see, my frame rate is being displayed right here. It says, whatever, 230 frames. And if I untick that and apply, it disappears, right? So if I tick it again, it comes back. But this check mark here does not tell you that it's actually being displayed automatically. It just says that it's being monitored. Now, you need to check show in on-screen display. This is checked off by default. So if I click that now, you can see I checked it, but it still won't display that value on my on-screen display. So I'm going to check that box and then it just reappears. So this is the first thing you're going to, you can do, right? So you, if you're unsure what means what, like frame time, frame rate, that's pretty self-explanatory, but you can do a bunch of other things. Um, then just take your time if you're patient enough and check what all the different boxes do. I set up uh, in a pretty basic manner. So let's start with frame rate, right? So I have it ticked 
and I have it in on-screen display. Uh, I want to show it as a text and not as a graph. You can change it as a graph. So frame rate, as you can see, it jumped jump to the bottom, but this has to do with the layout. Uh, but you can also do both, text and graph. Now it's going to be a text here and the graph there. Uh, I don't like that this way, so it's just going to be the text, right? And you can also set some settings to show it on Logitech LCD display. I think that used to be a keyboard, or you can show it in tray icon. This means that uh, in your taskbar in the bottom right, you can display your frame rates of your game. I don't know, that doesn't really make any sense, but I guess if you wanna monitor the clock speed of your GPU in Windows, you could set that here, okay? Um, now I ticked most the things that interest me, which is what you can see here, also here. Now, sometimes these have a different name for me. For example, what usually shows up is the name of the of the graph name on the left side. So for example, let's go to GPU temperature. It says GPU temperature, but I renamed that. I, I checked override group name and I renamed that to GPU temp. This way I can, it's just easier to read for me, basically. The same with core clock. I renamed that to the RTX 3080 core uh, in order for you viewers to have an easier time to read what GPU I have and what CPU I have. So I don't need to repeat myself all the time. Although I will do that anyway. <laughs> um, so there's a bunch of things. This is very basic right now. There's a bunch more uh, like the color coding. Uh, it's all a bit more advanced and you need to go into the settings deeper. So let's do that. First of all, let's just disable all of this, right? So we start from scratch. So I'm gonna show you a couple things. All right. Oh, power percent, GPU voltage, there it is. I forgot to toggle two CPUs. There it is. Now we just got the frame time. Uh, I display that as a graph and I always wanna have that at the top. Now let's go and frame rate. This is this year. Now you can see that the, uh, it says frame, uh, overwrite the graph name. Sorry, am I on the right? Yeah, I have not actually ticked anything here. So I can overwrite the group name to not say D3, D11. So app basically means it's going to take whatever API the game is running on and displaying that. So whatever I can say, uh, frames per second and then it will show frames per second, right? But I actually like apps, so I'm gonna keep that as it is. And it's gonna go back to D3D11 because Valley is DirectX 11. Now let's go to GPU temperature, take that. You could tick the limits here, but these are set by default. Um, now, Let's go into a little bit of more advanced settings. Um, you can click these three dots here next to show in on-screen display. And it's gonna bring up another window. At first, this is very intimidating when you open this because you're like, holy shit, I can do all kinds of, uh, kinds of things and I, I don't know what they mean, right? So I'm gonna show you a little bit of this. If you wanna color code certain sections of uh, your overlay, you can set a color library. Like basically all this does is you tell MSI Afterburner which colors it can use uh, to display certain categories. So you can set, I, I don't know if you can actually insert more, you can go on the line here and, and click on insert. Yes, and you can. You can just insert any other color you want. And if you wanna use like, I don't know, 20 colors, you 
feel free to do so. I'm actually very content with the six colors that you get by default. So this is the alignment library. The alignment stands for basically uh, how many characters, like the spacing between the two things, right? You can have a spacing between the group name and the actual value. And you can also have a spacing between the number and the unit code of the value. So, or like Celsius, for example, like you can make it appear all the way to the right if you want that. Uh, I just need enough space between these two, between the group name and the actual value. So it's easier to read because if they're right next to each other, it's really confusing. Um, these are size libraries. So all these libraries basically just tell you the options that you're going to have later down the line. And you can insert or delete options that you want. Uh, separators, that's another thing. Separators uh, basically stand for, I think T means slash T means that or backslash T that there's no separator. And slash N means that you're going to put a space in between the groups. So you're separating groups. I'm going to show you that in a second. And then there's value alignment. And any item means they're all the same. So they're all five characters from the right as kind of a space between them. And you can set this individually, but honestly, I, I would just leave it as it is. So group color. So you can make a, a group color. Um, you can do any item so everything is the same. Or you can attach the, the colors that you chose in the library. You can attach them to certain things here. So for example, frame rate, uh, CPU I made blue, then the frame time is white, and the frame rate as well. Um, so you can set all the colors that you set in your library earlier. You can choose them in the actual, um, what's it called, categories, right? So let's look at that for a second. So I'm going to enable a bunch of things here. I don't actually know if I used all that. Okay. So let's go back to CPU, enable that to the temperature. Okay. Mm -hmm. I actually haven't set this in OSD, as you can see. So that was kind of useless for me. All right, there you go. And we can also set the clock. All right, so it's in the same group. Now we're going to go back to RAM usage, system RAM used. We can get that over here. Um, voltage, GPU voltage, as well as I think power, GPU power draw, right. Commit charge. No, I did not use that. I use CPU power draw as well. Okay, so let's go into the temperature, CPU temperature. CPU temperature over here. So it says CPU temperature. It says down here, that's the i7-9700K temperature. If I go click on the three dots again, that's the color four that's being used. So let's go into the group of CPU temperature. You see right here, it's yellow. Now let's just choose red for whatever reason. And you can see this changes to red. So this is where you can basically choose your, your colors and color code it the way you want it. Now the spacing, let's get into the spacing a little bit more. Uh, I haven't fully figured out how it works. I know that anything that is a graph, you can set a global value. For example, here, the width, the um, height, and the margin. So minus 20, I can put it to minus 30. And you can see that this entire graph is going to be much wider, or longer. Um, not really you could play around with these settings to see what you like. I wouldn't make it too large. 
You can also set a graph style. So this is a bar chart over here, but you can make it a graph. Boom, now it's a graph, or you can just make it a, uh, a graph. Hold on. A diagram, that's what I meant. So this is that. And I'm just gonna make it a bar chart again. And the frame time. Now this is like any item. So basically any new graph item that I insert is gonna be a bar chart, unless I specify it. I just go click insert on my keyboard just now and I can specify that for example, the CPU temperature. I wanna add that as a graph style. For example, diagram. And now if I go back to CPU temperature, I can go back to graph and it will show as that diagram. Now it's switched location. Uh, this is because diagrams are basically not hard encoded into the order that you set in here. So let's go back. I'm gonna make that a text again. Goes back into yellow. And we're going to, uh, we can just leave that over here. So this is the graph placement, right? So you can set any item is gonna be added to the bottom, which is just what we did. But if you want a specific item, like that diagram that we just made, uh, you can also add or press insert here on the keyboard again, and then add CPU temperature and make it appear either top embedded or at the bottom. So this was confusing to me at first because I wanted these two graphs to be displayed on the top and on the bottom, right? And the spacing between the character, hold on, this is group size, value size. So value is, as far as I know, let's see, temp limit, um, subscript. No, I don't think I have that set. Uh, let's go check out unit size. Um, right, subscript means that the unit itself will not be written in full capital letters, but will be um, dropped down a fair bit in size in order for you to just read the actual number and then as you can see here, I like it the other way around, the superscript rather than subscript. And I should go back to default. Uh, that's wrong what I just said. 50% means that it's reduced in size and subscript is different from superscript. So the unit size is default. And let's go back to size library. Subscript, uh, the default, where's the size default? I guess that is not set anywhere if you don't set it yourself. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Um, default means, I guess it means 100%, so it's just as large as the actual value itself, the value size. Index size. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what these mean yet. I need to still get acquainted with some of the settings, but you get the idea. Now, value alignment. This was something I fiddled around with quite a bit. So you can see here, let's go to the frame rate. Four fixed jars from the right. Let's go make that 10 fixed jars. And now it will just drop, uh, drop me back more to the right. So if you want to space these out a little bit more, you can do that. Four fixed jars, right? But I think it's just perfect the way it is. Obviously left means that these are gonna be separated. So basically 
this will all be in order here and the number is going to be put a little bit to the left. I don't know why you would want this, but feel free to do so. Okay. So yeah, I hope this shows you a little bit of what you can do with MSI Afterburner. Um, I'm not 100% certain what everything does yet, but I think I've spent a little bit of time or enough time to uh, make use of the the tool as I need it. And um, I hope this helped you a little bit as well. If you have any questions, as always, let me know in the comments and maybe leave a like and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Peace.